Is this function differentiable at x equal to 0? Hmm. This is a very classic calculus question. It's designed so that you cannot just take the derivative of this function the regular way. Here's the deal. We have the function defined as x squared times sine of 1 of x if x is not equal to 0, and f of x is equal to 0 if x is equal to 0. If you really differentiate this function by using the product rule and also the chain rule, later on, it looks like you have to plug in 0 into x, and you're running into trouble. Because if you're just plugging x into this expression, it looks like it's undefined, right? But in fact, this function is differentiable. To do so, we actually have to go back to the fundamental, and that is to use the definition of derivative. So here we go. To get f prime of 0, we have two versions of the limit definition. I'm going to use the limit as x approaching this number. You can also use the one that has h approaching 0. You can try that. This is slightly better in this situation. All right, I'll write down the definition for you guys. We have f of x minus f of 0 over x minus 0. Now, when we have the limit as x approaching 0, we don't care about when x is exactly equal to 0. So for our function here, we don't want x is exactly equal to 0, so we do this. So this will give us the limit as x approaching 0. I will just write that down. x squared times sine of 1 over x. And then minus, here we have f of 0. That means when x is exactly equal to 0, what's the output of the function? It says right here, when x is equal to 0, f of x is equal to 0. So we have to subtract 0. And then for the bottom, we have x. And now as you can see, we can cancel one of the x's. So we are just going to get the limit as x approaching 0, x times sine of 1 over x. Now, if you're getting this question for your assignment or on your test, do not do the following. Do not just put 0 into the axis and say, we have 0 times sine of 1 over 0, and then ha, 0 times anything should just be equal to 0, and then move on. Don't do that. Because you can only break it down into the limits of the first times the limit of the second if both limits exist. Yes, if you have the limit as x approaching 0 of x, this does give you the 0. But if you have the limit as x approaching 0 of sine of 1 over x, if you have this portion, this actually does not exist. And 0 times doesn't exist, you cannot just say it's equal to 0 right away. You will have to do it more rigorously. So as I said, if you're getting this question on the test, make sure you show the correct work. Otherwise, if you put on the correct answer, it's not going to be enough. So what exactly do we do though? Check this out. So the idea for this is, whenever we have this kind of situations, so the idea for this is, whenever we have like this part being does not exist, and if it is with sine or cosine, then we can use the squeeze zero. Because for sine or cosine, we know they are in between of negative one and one, right? So let's go ahead and write this down. Note, whenever we have sine of theta, this is always in between of negative one and one for all real number theta. Now, because we have inequalities, and later on, we will have to multiply by the x. And because x is approaching 0, technically, you should do the left limit and also the right limit, meaning positive x and also negative x. We will have to switch the inequality here and there. Not so nice, right? An easier way to fix that is, let's look at the absolute value version of this. We can look at this inequality as the absolute value of sine theta has to be less than or equal to 1. And of course, because we have the absolute value is never negative, we can say this right here is always greater than or equal to 0. And this is true for all real number theta. Now, I'm going to be plugging 1 over x into theta right here. 
So we have absolute value of sine of 1 over x. This has to be less than or equal to 1. And of course, it has to be non-negative. And again, we are not worried about x being exactly equal to 0. Okay, right here, we have this part already. We need the x, right? So I will be looking at this inequality and multiply everybody by not just x though, because x could be negative if x is approaching to 0 from the left-hand side. Don't worry, let's put an absolute value from it, so this is never negative. This times this is 0, and then less than or equal to, you can just keep the inequality sign because absolute value of x is never negative. And then we do this times that, so I'll just write this down like so. And then we can say this times this is just absolute value of x. Now, the next part is, we'll just take the limit. I will just write this down as the limit as x approaching 0 for this expression, for this expression, and for this expression. So for this right here, we are looking at the limit as x approaching 0 of 0. The inequality stays. This has to be less than or equal to the limit as x approaching 0 of this times that. Now, the product of the absolute values is the same as the absolute value of the product. So I can put the x inside multiplying with sine of 1 over x. And technically, I will still have the absolute value. And then lastly, we still have the limit as x approaching 0 of the absolute value of x. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this right here is just equal to 0. And this right here, when you plug in 0, you get LOL. Just kidding. Absolute value of 0, which is equal to 0. So you can see this part, by the squeeze theorem, it has to be 0. Because the only number in between of 0 and 0 with the equality is equal to 0. So let's just say equal to 0. And I will say by the squeeze. theorem. Okay. Now, here's another limit rule I have to tell you. If we have the limit of an absolute value of a function is equal to 0, the only way that can happen is the one without the absolute value is also equal to 0. So I can say this right here is equal to 0 by what I just showed you right here. Therefore, as you can see, f prime of 0 is equal to 0. So that means this function Yes, it's doable at x equal to 0. And that will be the answer.